Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone in today's class for the first intermediate uh, grade. Our textbook is Sober Goal 2 and today we will have uh, Enrichment uh, 3. It will be presented by me, teacher Mazra Harbi and the sign language by Mr. Saleh al -Ujan. What we're going to review today, we're going to review Unit uh, 6 that is uh, called Let's uh, Celebrate and you can find it on pages from 48 until uh, 55. So, let's uh, make a quick review on that unit. Uh, the first uh, thing we have uh, studied at that unit was uh, the concept of National Day, where we explored and learned different uh, uh, days of different uh, national days of different countries, and also we talked about different uh, forms of uh, celebrations in each of these countries. For example, when we said that the national day in Saudi Arabia is uh, on September 23rd and what uh, uh, are the celebration or the practices that people usually do on that day is that city and towns are covered in green, people fly flags and celebrate in the streets. As for other countries that uh, we have uh, read, uh, starting from Oman, we said that they have official celebrations, parades and fireworks. Also, the Emirates, they uh, celebrate the Federation of the Emirates. People decorate the streets, buildings, homes with their uh, bright lights. As for Kuwait, we learned that they have uh, two days to celebrate. The first one is uh, the national and the, the second one is the liberation uh, day. They s usually celebrate it with special event, events and fireworks. So we learned that uh, concept and even we read a conversation about uh, this one, uh, uh, about uh, the uh, practices of uh, the National Day. Not only this, but also with the vocabulary, we learned uh, to fill the blanks with words uh, that we can find on page uh, 48, the words uh, that talks about different practices in uh, different countries. And we fill in this, uh, or, uh, this uh, exercise with these uh, uh, vocabularies like celebrate, decorate, celebrations, fireworks, uh, share, and uh, flags. And also, after this, we uh, answer a yes or no question, a comprehension question, about uh, the practices, about uh, the celebrations that usually, uh, according to the text, usually uh, ca we can see at uh, the different countries. So as you can see here, here uh, this is how we uh, answer these questions. For example, Kuwaitis celebrate their liberation day. The answer is yes. In the UAE, people only decorate their homes. The answer is no. They do more than this according to the text that we have uh, read. After this, we went to the uh, pair work where we uh, learn how to make questions about uh, holidays. Questions like, when is the national day in your country? And you can start your answer by uh, these uh, <coughs> by saying that the national day is on and then you uh, mention the date after this what do people usually do on that day this is also another question that follow the first one when you uh, open discussion by asking about the national day and also uh, other question like uh, what are you going to do on the national day and as you as we have learned that this underlined the uh, uh, either in questions or answers uh, can be uh, changed. And also about invitations, we have also uh, another part of our lesson in how to ask about invitations. For example, do you want to invite uh, your cousins uh, for it? So this is also a form of question that we use uh, if we want to ask about uh, uh, invitations. After this, uh, on page uh, 50, we went straight to the, ob uh, the object pronouns and we learned in that grammar rule about the object pronouns. We said that, to, of course, we, uh, we know the subject pronouns like I, you, he, she, we, you, and they, but uh, what is new here is that we also have other pronouns that we call the object pronouns and usually object pronouns comes after the verb comes after the verb. So, for example, the object pronoun that is equal to uh, 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 equal to I, myself, is me. And the object pronoun that equal to he, uh, 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 another person, which is him. 
and her. And also here we have the object pronoun that uh, for me and you is us. And when I want to talk about you is you. And if I want to talk about other group of people, I would use them. And we learned that we use uh, these object pronouns uh, straight after a main verb, as you can see here. He knows me. I know him. So this is how can we use the object pronouns. And also the other part we have learned, which is about need, want, and like plus infinitive. And we gave examples like this. What do we need to buy for the celebration? We need to buy some snack. And do you want to invite your friend? Yes, I want to invite. And do you like to watch parades? Yes, I like to watch them. And we said that uh, we use uh, need when we're talking about uh, uh, something that uh, uh, we need, something that is necessary, that is important. And we use uh, want if we want something at specific time. For example, uh, what do you want uh, uh, for lunch? Okay. And like is about preference. When we're talking about the things that we like uh, or the things that we prefer. So this is what, uh, when can we use I like to. So these are the examples on the difference, uh, the difference between using need, want, and like plus infinitive. After this, we learned about, or we talked about let's plus a verb, and we said that usually let's is an answer to a suggestion. For example, when someone said, what do you want to do now? What do you want to do now? So this is a question. He's looking for a suggestion. He's looking in this case for a suggestion and if you want to answer that suggestion you you can say okay let's play a game or let's have a conversation let's go shopping let's do so and so so uh, we have uh, more than one example to mention about uh, using let's plus the verb to either agree uh, or disagree with the suggestion now, after this, we have listened to the invitations on telephone answering machines. So we have a similar chart to this. In this chart, we have different uh, holidays like Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, or another occasion, which is a graduation party. And we have divided it into three parts, day, time, and place. And we said that now we're going to listen to three uh, answering machines, three telephone answering machines and uh, uh, replies and what we need to do is that uh, we're going to fill in each one of them so the answer were like this for Eid al-Fitr the day was on Tuesday the time was 11 o'clock and the place at the parents house and uh, on Eid al-Adha it was on Wednesday and the time was 3 o'clock and the place was the family farm and finally the graduation party was on Thursday, the time is 8 o'clock, and uh, at the place was at the Lebanese restaurant. After this, uh, we uh, learned or we talk about uh, the object pronouns that not usually have strong stress in normal speech. And they are usually said uh, quickly. We learned this and we said that you, sometimes when, you, uh, when they are in the middle of the sentences, uh, you don't uh, stress them uh, very hard. So, for example, when we say, does he know him well? Does he know him well? And he knows him very well. He knows him very well. You see that we said that we can pronounce these object pronouns without stressing uh, them. Uh, another example, does she call her often? Does she call her often? She calls her every day. She calls her every day. So this is how we can merge the object pronouns when we are uh, speaking. After this, we have listened to a conversation, conversation uh, between Amr and Said, when each one of them talk about uh, uh, his, uh, their uh, plans and uh, Amr trying to uh, invite uh, Said to the uh, graduation party of uh, uh, his uh, cousin. And uh, also Said is asking, uh, for uh, more details about uh, that uh, parties and so uh, uh, to decide whether to join uh, him at that party or not. 
And also next, we have a very interesting uh, questions about you, where I ask you or uh, I ask you a couple of questions and I told you to think of this question when it is the time for you to graduate. For example, what do people usually do for uh, graduation? What are the activities? We discuss what are the activities, the things that people usually do for this uh, or for, uh, for a graduation. And also, what are you going to do for your own graduation? So you are in the first intermediate grade when you uh, finish, uh, hopefully, uh, the third intermediate grade and you want to graduate to high school. What uh, high school, what are your plans for your uh, graduation party? And what's your favorite holiday? We discuss all the possibilities that you may uh, choose from Eid al-Fitr, uh, Eid al-Abha, or even the graduation uh, party or national day. So we discuss uh, different, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, ups and goods, or the good thing and the bad things about uh, these uh, holidays. And how do you celebrate each one of them as we reflect on the beginning of this unit where we talk about the different uh, practices and different uh, celebrations. And after this, we had a reading text about Eid celebrations, where in this text we read about uh, the different uh, uh, practices and celebrations uh, in different Islamic uh, uh, countries. And we said that uh, uh, what is the common feature of Eid celebration is that people usually uh, do their best to be kind and generous uh, to each other and they donate uh, food to the poor and as we call as you know we call it zakat al-futr and also in some areas uh, they usually people or neighbors uh, place a uh, large rugs uh, just uh, to uh, for the other neighbors to gather and celebrate uh, Eid as well also, and uh, we talk about Eid al-Adha, what are the practices and the celebrations in Eid al-Adha. We said that in Eid al-Adha, people or Muslims are usually all over the world, they sacrifice an animal, and depending on the region, sometimes some of them sacrifice a lamb, a goat, or a camel, or even a cow. And the family shares the meal uh, with each other and get together for a special meal. So we have talked about uh, these uh, features of uh, a uh, different aids, Eid al-Fitr and uh, Eid al-Adha in most of the Islamic uh, uh, countries. And also we have uh, uh, detected from that reading text a couple of uh, important uh, words like, uh, for example, widely celebrated holiday. If you remember, we said, what do you mean by widely? It means that uh, by a large number of people. So this holiday is celebrated by a large number of people. And also when we said they show their generosity, it means that they show the spirit of giving or sharing freely. They, uh, they giving or sharing freely. And also when we said that Muslim usually donate uh, food at the ends uh, uh, at the end of Ramadan, it means that uh, they give a way in order to help uh, the poor people uh, uh, in uh, the Muslim world, uh, world. So this is uh, some of the important vocabularies that we highlighted from this reading, uh, reading uh, text. Also, as a discussion, I ask you to choose a holiday and discuss it with a partner and compare how to celebrate the holiday with your uh, families and we found it that interesting after reading that text to, to compare between our celebration or your own celebration with the celebrations that you read on the text so it was a, a very good idea to discuss with a, a, an adult or a family member of yours to uh, talk about these uh, celebrations and these uh, practices of uh, uh, Eid. After this, uh, we went to uh, uh, the uh, writing uh, lesson and we said that uh, we had a very, uh, interesting, uh, uh, very interesting exercise uh, and it's unique, which is uh, to find 20, 20, uh, to, uh, 22 words in the word uh, search that are related to celebrations and to, uh, 12, of course, words uh, uh, across and 10 of them were down to shade them with a pencil. And after you do this, what you need to do is uh, to write the remaining letters to find a hidden uh, message. And if you remember that when we finish doing this, when we find the 12 words uh, across and when we find the 10 words uh, down, 
we have uh, some uh, uh, some letters uh, uh, remains and we find out that if you remember uh, the phrase uh, was uh, let's uh, celebrate which is uh, the title of uh, our uh, unit so it was a very uh, interesting uh, uh, exercise after this uh, we have uh, uh, another exercise where i ask you to read the invitation for a graduation party and to work with a partner ask and answer uh, questions uh, starting with who what where and when and why and we gave example of uh, this this was a simple graduation invitation card and uh, as you can see here we have uh, the phrase please join us to celebrate the graduation of Ahmed Al Faisal, and this is the time. It will be on Saturday, May fifteenth uh, uh, at uh, six uh, p.m. And this is the place, which is the Oasis uh, Restaurant in Mecca Road, on uh, Mecca Road. So uh, this is what this was a very uh, uh, simple invitation card. And if you remember that we did ask questions about that uh, invitation card, the question started. Uh, Starting with, for example, who is the graduation party for? Ahmed Al Faisal. And uh, where is it going to be? It will be uh, in Oasis Restaurant on Mecca Road. And when it's going to be? It will be on Saturday, May 15th at uh, uh, 6 uh, uh, p.m. And uh, why are they having such a graduation party to celebrate? the graduations, uh, uh, the graduation after long years of uh, uh, studying. So we had a, a similar uh, questions uh, like this. And also I ask you to write your own, uh, uh, your own invitation uh, card and also fill in the information uh, that uh, were uh, similar uh, to this. So here, as you can see, decide which holiday, this one of these exercises that we trained on, Decide which holiday celebration you're going to write about in exercise D and design an invitation and invite your friends to celebrate. And also write about a holiday, a celebration in your country, include the date, the clothing, the food, the special events or the traditional practices and use vocabularies from the word search and ideas uh, uh, from this unit. Uh, so just to... to uh, uh, just to uh, emphasize the importance of the graduation uh, party, you can write uh, a similar uh, one or a similar uh, card uh, to this, but mention the date, the clothing, the food, and the special, uh, uh, the special events uh, that will be happening or the practices that will be happening on that day. So uh, we had a, a similar one uh, to this. And also, uh, this was a similar uh, to uh, uh, one of these exercises as a project where I ask you to celebrate a uh, research, a celebration in another country and to pres uh, present your finding in class just to find out the differences between the celebration that you are familiar with in your country with uh, a different uh, one. After this, in the, it was uh, the last part of the unit where we had in the form, meaning and function, we learned the difference between must and mustn't and should and shouldn't. We said that uh, must and should are usually, those are, we call them uh, model verbs and the form of the model verb do not change or doesn't change at all according to the subject. And after the model verbs must and should, we use the base form, the same form of uh, uh, each uh, uh, verb. So for example, let's start with must. Must expresses the obligation, the necessity, the importance of something that is uh, uh, very important uh, uh, to do. For example, when we say, we must follow the rules, we must follow the rules, or we must stop at the traffic lights. So this is, we are indicating the importance and the necessity of doing something. And uh, must not or mustn't, it means that something is prohibited, something is not allowed. And we gave examples like this. You mustn't talk during the test, or they mustn't park on the sidewalk so this was the part of uh, must the other part about uh, should and should it we, we said that we usually use should or shouldn't to give advice or to make a suggestion that may be important but it gives the listener the choice so of course so we're talking here we use should for important things but uh, at least the listener has the choice to do it or not to do it for example with should 
uh, when we said that uh, we should donate to the poor. We should donate uh, to the poor. This is giving an advice. And also, when we said she shouldn't uh, spend all her money, this is also a suggestion or an advice. So to make a suggestion or to give an advice, we give or we use either should or uh, shouldn't. So here are uh, all of them in one slide, the, uh, the importance of must and mustn't and should and shouldn't. And also we uh, did uh, answer a couple of questions about uh, must. For example, the first one, change the imperatives that you can see here with sentences using uh, must and mustn't. And so we have imperative like this, do your homework tonight. And we use it using must, we said, I must do my homework uh, tonight. And we answer the following uh, uh, similar uh, to the uh, first one. And also with exercise B, complete the sentences with should and shouldn't, uh, 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 and the verb uh, that we can see uh, between uh, uh, brackets. And we said, uh, for example, Yahya's tooth hurts. He should see a dentist. He should uh, see a dentist. So. This is uh, how we completed the, the uh, other answers, uh, as you can see here. And also, the last thing we did on that page is that exercise C, where I ask you to work in group, plan the end of the year celebration for your class, and uh, think about the date, the time, the place, the food and drinks, invitation, the guests, and activities using should or uh, must. So. I ask you to uh, uh, imagine that you're going, or maybe uh, for real, that you're going to host a uh, uh, at the end of the year celebration uh, for ending uh, the year, and just to try to fill, uh, design a similar card to this, and write down the information like the date, the place, the guests, the uh, 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 practices, and to make it sim uh, to make it easier for you, you can answer these questions just to have uh, uh, an idea about what you're going to write. For example. When should we have this celebration? Here uh, to talk about time. Where should we have it? Here we're talking about lace. And should we have a decorations? Yes or no? And what uh, are they? So this was a fun uh, exercise uh, to do. So now we have uh, reached the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.